Hello everyone. So I wanted to add the cruise control button that I talked about in the last video to the tractor. I have the button right here. It's a pretty simple little button. And there's probably a plug in there. Uh, the part number is right here. Main Japan. So I ordered this uh, probably about a month ago and it was in stock at the time, but I don't know if they are anymore. I actually got the last one that was in stock at the place where I bought it from. So what has to happen is this is the spot where it goes right here. And I'm hoping that the plug is just under here somewhere. So if we go under here, there is a plug right there. I don't know if that's the right wire though. But I assume the wire is there. So I'm going to pop this out real quick like that <laughs> very simple little plug and then i'm hoping yep i'm pretty sure the connector is just right in there you can see the connector is right here it's not even like capped off or anything so i'm just gonna pop this in there plug it in and it should work just how it's supposed to all right so let's open this up it's a nice weather sealed button too so we'll just go under here plug it in i don't know if it's oh it is zip tied in there yeah it's zip tied bent over so i'm gonna want to remove the zip tie there this is a reusable zip tie so if I can press this button and then push it out of there. It's a reusable zip tie. So you put it in there and then you just press that button right there and then you can pull it out. So don't even have to cut it. And then the cable, you can see way easier now. Have plenty of space. So we'll just plug it right in here like that. And then clip this in. If it will. Not sure why it's not. I don't know why it doesn't want to clip in. The front actually is hitting on the plastic here. I think that's what's keeping it up too high. There we go. That's it. And now it's on. <laughs> Extremely easy modification. So in my last video, I didn't even actually start the tractor. So I'm gonna do that in this video. So we're gonna start the tractor and then we're gonna test out the cruising control and see how that works. to do is hit the set so it is moving and then you can press the up I think I don't know so it did set it I'm not quite sure all right so we're going hit the set you gotta hit it all the way down. It's going slower though. Can I just press the plus? Oh, I know why. So, what's going on? I have the auto throttle advance on. So when I hit this, when I hit the go forward pedal or backwards, it raises the RPMs automatically. When you're using the cruise, it doesn't do that. So I can turn the auto throttle advance off. Now if I do it, it stays the same throttle speed. So if I set the idle up a little higher, now if I start going, 
and I hit the set. Now it keeps it exactly where I had it. And I can just hit the plus and it raises that percentage and that tell and it goes faster then. So that's how that works, but it works perfect. And it'll kill it if you hit the reverse on the pedal. It'll kill it if you hit the brakes. Um, the one nice thing though, see if I hit this pedal, it kills it. The one nice thing though, is that if you unhook these brakes from each other, the cruise will keep going if you only hit one of the brakes at a time. So you can do a tight turn in a field or something and the cruise will stay locked in. But as of right now, I don't plan on using that. So now I'm going, hit set, and it keeps it right there. Puts off the pedal and I can increase it with this or I can just move the throttle up and it'll go faster as well. And it shows my uh, RPM on there as well. So that's one of the things. And then I have this lever here, which in any one of these high, medium, or low gears, it will, it has a fast and a slow speed to it. So if I just start going a little bit, if I change it to slow, it slows down. And I didn't change the position of the pedal at all. So you see I'm going 0.9 miles an hour now. If I go to high, then it bumps it up. And you can just do that on the fly while you're going. So that's pretty cool. So it also has stall guard. And what that means is if you're like going, pushing into like a pile of dirt or something and the engine starts bogging down, it'll reduce your hydrostatic force or pressure to keep the engine running. So it won't stall the engine at all, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't plan on ever turning that off. There might be times when you need to, but I, I don't see a point in it, honestly, right now. I mean, that's all the really cool features of it anyway. It does have different display modes. I didn't even try pressing that. Oh, it tells how much fuel it's using. The PTO speed. Oh, and then, so you can adjust the hydrostat mode, the response level, and the throttle up, if it's on or not. I'm not 100% sure how to select those, but you can adjust how responsive this pedal is, which is really a nice feature. I'm probably just gonna leave it where it's at. It seems fine to me, which is a zero. So it can go, I think, negative numbers and then positive numbers. So I'm just gonna keep it right in the middle. What else do we have in here? Oh, that's the particulate matter for the uh, deep, uh, the emission stuff. So once that, this is how contaminated or clogged it is. So once that gets to 100% or close to 100%, it's gonna wanna do a regen. And then your oil change, and then back to your hours. So some pretty cool stuff. I have another little thing that I want to put on here real quick before we end this video. So I bought one of these saw hauls for the tractor here. So I'm gonna try to get this on, not quite sure. I mean, I figure it'll probably go like right here somewhere, but there's some stuff sticking off on here, so hopefully it fits on there all right. But figure I'm gonna be doing a lot of tree stuff with this, so this might be a good thing to have on there. This goes on here. And then goes on there. And then the U-bolt goes around that. I'm gonna put this, they must use this bracket for other things as well. I need to go get the wrench for that. It actually says what I need in here. I should probably just look at it. This on there. And then tighten this down. All right. Seems fairly tough. Looks like it goes on that direction. I have to put this up here like this, I guess. And put this on. And I like that. Well, I guess that's it. I don't have my other little chainsaw, but I have this one here. So. 
And that's it, I guess. I guess it works fine. Hits on there. But this chainsaw is also a lot heavier than the one I normally use, so. I don't know, it'll probably work fine. It's not gonna fall out of there, so. And I'm not gonna leave a chainsaw in here all the time if I'm not using it either, so. Well, I think that'll probably be it for this video, I guess. It went a lot quicker than I thought it would, so. Uh, putting that switch in was extremely easy, and I, I thought it'd be a little bit more of a headache, but you don't have to even take anything off. You gotta take that zip tie off, which you can just do by hand, and then pop the, the switch in there, and it just works. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.